Good evening, team. I heard two sections of scripture being read to me as I was getting ready to wake up this morning. I heard the part of scripture that tells us in Isaiah 60 to arise, shine, because our light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon us and his glory shall be seen upon us. And the Gentiles shall come to our light and kings to the brightness of our rising. I also heard Jesus' words about us being a city set on a hill for all to see. What else? The interesting thing is there wasn't a dream to match the words. I sat half asleep wondering why I was hearing these in their relation to the fruit of the Spirit. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 13, he says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. After I had awakened more and had time to gather my thoughts, I soon began to realize how these scriptures are actually connected. In the former passage of scripture, we see things like, Arise, shine. And in the latter passage of Scripture, we hear Jesus' words about us being a city set on a hill. Now, these both have one thing in common, and that is exposure. They both deal with this concept of being out in the open, of being exposed, of being shown for all the world to see. Now, there are three things that I would like us to make note of. The first is, all darkness is, is the absence of light. I'll say that again. All darkness is, is the absence of light. Meaning, when we view a person who is in the dark, or someone that scripture calls walking in darkness, our view of them should not be one of condescension, but one of a person who has not had exposure properly to the light. Instead of viewing them as a wicked sinner who refuses to turn their heart to the Lord, let us view people as persons who have just not had exposure to the light. Most of you will know that if you go into a dark household, if you come back at night from anywhere and all of the lights in the house are turned off, the darkness is so strong and it's so prominent, you can almost feel the presence of darkness. However, when you flick on the light switch, when you turn on your flashlight app, or whatever you do to light up your house, all of that darkness suddenly vanishes. So, let us view ourselves as walking into places where light just is not presently. Secondly, let us look at the strength the persistence, the unrelenting nature of light. Anyone who has seen the sunrise, anyone who has even slept with the blinds open, will realize how persistent the properties of light are. In the morning time, light does not care that you want to go back to sleep for five minutes. Once that light hits your face for some of you, it's probably game over for sleep until later on that evening. One interesting thing is that in Alaska in the summertime, the sun does not go down in most of the state. I recall talking to someone who said that they had issues sleeping, actual trouble sleeping, because their entire stay in Alaska, the sun did not go down. So they were literally struggling, struggling to go to sleep unless they closed the blinds, the curtains, or whatever it was, I can't remember. And finally, the limitlessness of light. Our pastor Greg Howes 
has talked to us about how God wants us to live a wide open, spacious life. And a part of living that wide open, spacious life is understanding the limitlessness of our light. For too long, we have viewed our light as a tool to get others into the kingdom of God, a sort of way to woo people to gain as many souls as we can before we leave earth. Now, don't confuse my words. He who wins souls is wise, is what the scripture declares. So there is very much a utility and a necessity to the winning of souls. But God also gets glory in us taking care of what he calls the least of these. So that means if a homeless person gets food that day, if somebody is protected or rescued from some form of imminent danger, God also gets the glory out of those situations, even if that person that day doesn't confess and give their life to Jesus. He's a good father that only wants to see the best for his children. So let us not put a limit on how our light is shown and let us not reduce it simply to how many people said, I believe Jesus to be the Lord of my life that week. Now, let us take a minute to ponder upon fruit. Many of us in American society don't get the luxury of seeing the tilling, the watering, the photosynthetic conversion of energy, any other various processes that go into the production of fruit. All we see is the outward manifestation, the exposure, the evidence of how well taken care of the garden is. But let us look at the fruit, not as an exam that we need to pass, but as a measurement for where God can bring growth to our inner spirit and brighten our external selves. Scripture declares that we go from glory to glory, which I think can loosely be translated to we grow brighter and brighter as we allow God to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. It is important that we look at the fruit of the Spirit, not as a salvation rod, but as a growth evaluation. Let us not look upon one another trying to find out if we are actually Christians because we don't see patience in a person, long-suffering in a person, meekness in a person, but rather let us look internally and find out if we have enough kindness. If we don't, let us ask God for an increase of kindness, whether or not we have enough meekness. If we are not humble enough, God, let me not look at myself more highly than I ought. In sum, let us consider the exposure of the fruit and the glory that we carry as believers. God puts us at the forefront to show people, as scripture calls it, a more excellent way. Although it's nighttime and dark, arise and shine, I charge you, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you.